Hello, everyone. We are back, uh, which is a quick lecture. You're going to watch those two quick videos. Remember, this is an upper level class. <laughs> if you're like, there's a lot of work here. Uh, but remember, there's a lot of work. But for every discussion board, it pushes up the points past 100. So if you miss a few discussion boards, uh, don't freak out because they're actually free. And the more, the better, because then there's more points over 100. I want to say that so people aren't freaking out like, oh, man, this seems like a lot of work um, for, you know, a short class. But I don't want to jip anyone either um, because you pay uh, money and more money, actually, because I think tuition went up. But regardless, uh, I wanted to note some important things about the Cuba and the Estonian uh, short videos. You basically have, and this is important for nowadays because we're going, as the last lecture noted, into more conventional setting doctrine where we're looking at more state actors. So alliances are key in that balancing other states. So you saw what Castro did, particularly Fidel Castro himself, but also the people he was surrounded when the United States wouldn't leave it alone. I mean, we kept on trying to invade it, not just the Bay of Pigs, but Operation Mongoose. Castro said, well, I got no other choice. Let's bring the Soviets in to balance the United States. The same thing happened now more recently with Estonia. When Estonia felt, when you watch that uh, video, feels threatened by the Soviet Union, uh, I'm sorry, Russia, it's no longer the Soviet Union, Estonia is bringing in NATO to balance the Soviets. Basically, a smaller power is taking a, a, a bigger power in order to balance it. Same thing with the Ukraine. It's bringing in NATO and the United States, at least getting weapons, in order to help fight Russia. And this is going to be key, th these balancing acts in uh, military policy throughout the world. So what's interesting is even though Cuba you know, is Latin America speak Spanish? I mean, that was a long time ago before any of us were born, myself included. Uh, it's the same logic, bringing in a power, dragging it in and saying, look it, you know, we're going to balance you. Same thing with Estonia, a different part of the world, a different culture, different language, etc. doing a very similar thing. So the balance of power is very uh, universal, right? Bringing in another power and alliances are important. That's why it's key. Should the United States continue with Taiwan as, as you know, obviously Taiwan's using the United States to balance China, or will this drag us into a war? So that becomes very, very important to decide, right? You know, you have to ask yourself, you know, what kind of alliances do we want? And I don't give my opinion. I'm just saying that, you know, when I lived in Latin America, um, I remember working with the Taiwanese, so doing something with the Taiwanese, and I said, well, you're going to continue being independent, and they said, if you still help us, meaning if you serve as a balancer. And so allies are important, and we don't want to lose allies. This is Nicaragua. You know I've been a lot. That's a snake, if you can see, and it literally says um, the CIA, because we were committing an uh, illegal war. If I move around, you'll be able to see it. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, and my microphone does not allow it, but there it is, the CIA. That's a mural, and it's not here with me, obviously, but it's a picture I took in Leon, and the CIA during the 1980s supported an illegal war in Nicaragua. This is the uh, ally system, because the Nicaraguans had an overthrow of Somoza, a brutal dictator, but yet our key ally during the Cold War you know, the United States had an illegal war because they didn't want the quote unquote Soviet Union to have an ally. But see, I say quote unquote because it wasn't really an ally of the United of the Soviet Union, but it was using the Soviet Union to balance the United States. This is what happens. You know, people say things like, oh, look at Venezuela. It's going with Iran and China and Russia. But I don't think it feels like it has a choice. You know, these other powers bring people in. The same thing is happening with drone use right now in the Ukraine. It's using Turkish drones to basically, you know, hit Russian targets. And um, it's the same thing, you know, during the Azerbaijan conflict with Armenia. Azerbaijan has a strong relationship with Turkey, so it bought Turkish drones. And obviously there's an economic interest and stuff like that. But this is very important. So allies become very important.
And this is going to be part of the new world where we're really searching for allies. And that's what Russia's doing. Uh, in uh, before even they invaded the Ukraine, they made sure they spread their national gas, natural gas, or it is national gas, national uh, nat- nationalized, if you could say that. And basically now they have these this kind of gas diplomacy to make sure people like India, Saudi Arabia, and others don't put on sanctions because they can't. I mean, because it will cripple their economies, but they're going around Africa and all these other places saying, you know, be an ally with us. Sure, we invaded the Ukraine. It's disastrous, but we need these allies. So right now, I think, and you do not have to agree, we are in somewhat of another Cold War, which is fighting for allies. But a lot of smaller countries like Estonia bringing in NATO, Cuba bringing in uh, the United, uh, the Soviet Union have uh, do this, you know, all the time. Uh, but with the Cold War, it's when the major superpowers are engaging in this, you know, fight for allies. And, you know, that's kind of the world we're going into. But it doesn't mean that insurgencies aren't still important. Uh, if you notice in that article on uh, the fusionists and the purists, right, the fusionists are basically saying we need to train the military in a different way. It can't just be for this military conquering, balance of power, et cetera. We have to train the military in a way that, you know, kind of wins the hearts and minds. So in that example, it took the uh, Missouri um, military, the not the military, but to actually go to Afghanistan because they were trained in agriculture to help the people of Afghanistan to kind of build that what we call soft power, that we're able to deliver the goods and you want to be with us because we're good people and we're happy, uh, ha- happy uh, and you're happy with us. Uh, the National Guard, I meant to say. The purists are saying, no, we still have to just maintain a military based on, you know, military battles. And that's, you know, what they're looking at. So you have to decide, too, how do we train the military, right? Is it just pure military or should we um, train the military in a more fusionist approach that says, you know, they have to be uh, skilled in diplomacy, language skills, cultural skills, geographical skills, and diversify their talents and not just know how to shoot a gun. Now, all my great uh, uh, students who are veterans or in the military have told me that seems to be the way they're going is in the fusion approach. So this is important to understand from military capabilities. It's not just the military capability itself, but how we train them, the allies we have. Like I just said, this is a big snake. When we lost the ally Nicaragua, we lost it because then they became part of, you know, it got kind of caught up in the Cold War so that we supported an illegal war. One of the things, and I'll end here, about uh, allies, we kind of ignore allies' human rights abuses. So like Colombia has been an ally of the United States, has had horrible human rights abuses. Teodoro Obeyang of Equatoria Guinea, I uh, give to my class actually a 60 Minutes video uh from australia on the brutality of that uh uh, government uh but it runs with the oil company and keeps his people poor so you know when we talk about democracy it's sometimes a a just um a lie uh you know to talk about you know because they're not our ally so you know venezuela is not a democracy not because it's not a democracy or is a democracy because it's not our ally you know right now you know, it doesn't matter about the human rights abuses. We supported a man named Carlos Andres Perez who killed up to 3,000 innocent civilians, but he was an ally. So it's like, well, that really didn't happen. And that happens a lot. So, you know, the system we live in seems to be going towards a system of alliances, which are very, very important. And the United States and Russia will do anything to have them now in this new Cold War. And we will look the other way. And so does Russia. So does China when our allies commit human rights abuses. So um, again, thank you for coming out. I wanted to go over that because it's very important, this idea of alliances, how we train the military, the the, um, fusionist and purist approaches, and how once we have allies, we kind of look the other way when they commit human rights abuses. So thanks, everyone, and take care.